Time for tip number two of the Raising a Child with ADHD series. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who don't know, I'm Tanya, an MDJD turned stay-at-home mom of three kids ages seven, four, and two. My seven-year-old has ADHD, and so I thought it would be a good idea to do a series of videos about how we are learning to manage his ADHD and also to create an environment to help him to thrive. I'm doing this series in collaboration with my friend Michelle at A Common Life, who has sons with sensory processing disorder. So if you want to hear more about that, please go to her playlist, which I'll link above and below. To get started, one of the things that is most difficult for ADHD children is to manage their time. Time management is a key feature of executive functioning. As we mentioned in the previous video, many ADHD children have difficulty with executive functioning because of delayed development of their frontal lobe. Executive functioning often involves time management issues. So if I send up my son to go get ready for the day or go get ready for co-op, and I just say that, that is not going to work. I need to tell him when he wakes up in the morning, okay bud, we're going to brush our teeth, we're gonna wash our face, we're gonna brush our hair, we're gonna make our bed, and then we're gonna meet downstairs for breakfast. Doesn't really work to tell him, I wanna see you downstairs in 10 minutes after all that is done. For one thing, he's prone to forget one step after another, and so lists and schedules and visual charts are helpful, which we'll talk about in another video. But for example, in the morning when I want my son to get ready for co-op, I could just tell him, buddy, be downstairs in 15 minutes and you should be ready for co-op. I think we all know how that's gonna go. It's not, in 15 minutes I'm gonna go upstairs and he's probably gonna be building Legos if he's even gotten up out of bed. So I need to go upstairs, give him his list of tasks, which I know has been the same every day of his life, again, in a really simple orderly fashion, perhaps provide him with some visual cues so he knows the order of steps. And I also need to set a timer for him because he has no way of gauging how time is passing. That is very much a difficulty for many ADHD children. And if we expect them to somehow know that 10 minutes has passed or 15 minutes has passed or 30 minutes have passed while they've been distracted by something else, we are setting them up for failure and we're setting ourselves up for a lot of unnecessary frustration. Once I got a timer in place, it really changed our mornings. And the timer I like to use is this, the time timer. And what's special about it is that when you set the timer, it actually counts down. So the children have a visual marker of how time is passing. There are several different types of timer devices that show a visual representation of how time is passing. And I strongly recommend them over something like, let's say a kitchen timer, where a child really doesn't know when that ding is going to go off. They just are surprised when it does. This, on the other hand, if they take a look at it and it's on their bathroom counter, they can see, oh, I only have five minutes left. Oh, I only have 10 minutes left. It's time is passing and I need to get my groove on and do what I'm supposed to do. Um, I use one of these for his morning routine. I also use it for a lot of our homeschooling. Sometimes I'll set it at an hour um, and say, you know, in an hour we're gonna be done and we're gonna have lunch. That's all we're going to do for the rest of the day. Sometimes I'll set it for five minutes and say, you know what, this worksheet should just take five minutes. So let's try and get it done. Let's, let's beat the clock and just make it fun that way. All in all though, I strongly recommend that you get one. We used to have one that had three different time colors and it would be green when they had a lot of time left, yellow when they had, I believe five minutes left, or you could set when it would go yellow to be like a warning, you're running out of time. And then it would, it would change color to red when they were done. Um, I really like that concept. I think it was called time tracker but ours broke, just to give you a warning. It has really high reviews on Amazon, but ours did break. I'll link that one down below too, though, because I think it's a great concept and it comes in two or three different styles. Um, this one comes in a bigger size as well. I think it's like six by six. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. I use it for everything. Another way in which you can use the timer is to time yourself. So if your child wants you to play a game with them and you're already doing something else or they need your attention for something, you can tell them, buddy, why don't you go set the timer for five minutes or 10 minutes and I will come help you as soon as that timer dings. And the key about this is that 
when it dings, you need to stop what you're doing and go help them out. Because that way they'll realize that time is not dependent upon your whims. Time is something that is relentlessly moving forward, completely separate of their mom's ideas or their dad's or theirs. And so it's something to be respected. If they see you respecting the timer, it'll be much easier for them to respect it themselves. So I strongly recommend this one. I'll link the other one I mentioned down below as well. And I hope you guys get a lot of use out of your timers and I hope it changes your routines for the better. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next tip in the series next Friday. As always, I wish you the very best day and good luck with your homeschooling and parenting journeys.